Through the My Toyota store, you can enjoy hassle-free online buying for your Toyota genuine parts and all make parts. With an electronic parts catalog containing over 400,000 Toyota genuine parts, all accessible through a model serial search so you can take the guesswork out of identifying the correct part for your equipment. Get started today at shop.toyotaforklift.com. That's shop.toyotaforklift.com. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawton with the New Warehouse Podcast, bringing you a new episode today. And on today's episode, I am going to be joined by Kelly Driscoll, who's the next Trex development representative at Trex, and her counterpart, Stephanie Hicks, materials and recycling programs manager at Trex as well. And Trex is all about, I know them as all about decks and making uh recycled material into products that we can use for construction and other things as well. So we're going to dive into a little bit on their recycling program and how they're working with the warehousing industry to, to take some of that waste and convert it into some of those construction materials. So very interested to dive into this topic today. I think it's a very interesting thing to discuss and something that should be top of mind for a lot of warehouse operators as well. So Kelly and Stephanie, welcome to the show. How are you? Good. Great. Thank you. How are you? Thank you. Good, good. Doing well. Very excited to talk about this one today. Um, I think that also, uh, it's funny, I was thinking about this one. I think my, my father will be excited for this too. He's a big uh, Trex fan. He's got Trex on his porch and, and stuff like that. So I think he'll he'll enjoy this one. Um, but why don't you kind of give us, uh, I mean, I gave my little overview of what I know about you guys and your materials, but why don't you give us a little overview of Trex for people that maybe are, are not familiar? Sure. Yeah. So um, thank you, Kevin, for having us today. Um, so Trex decking is, we manufacture composite deck boards. We've been in the industry for over 30 years and we have different ways of how we collect our film, but for this purpose is um, talking specifically about polyethylene film and recycling. So we take the recycle, recycled film and reclaim sawdust, and that creates the core of our board, our Trex board, and then it basically binds together, and we have a shell that wraps around the material, and we, and as you can see, it's right here. So this is the, the core of the board mixed with the polyethylene film and reclaimed sawdust, and then this is the shell. So we are, um, we have two plants in Winchester, Virginia. That's where our global headquarters is. And then we have a second plant in Fernley, Nevada that services the West Coast. And we're in the process of building our third plant in Little Rock, Arkansas. So our demand's high, we're growing. So what that means is we need more recycled film. We need more um, product to make our boards. Very nice. And I think... You know, demand increasing, I think, is is certainly warranted. I mean, the product itself is last for a very long time. I mean, it's very sturdy and it's pretty uh, incredible how you've been able to take kind of essentially what in the past maybe would be waste and turn it into something that's incredibly durable and can last a long time. Um, and I guess in a sense, doesn't necessarily need to be recycled uh, again if you're using it and, and letting it last its, its lifetime. Um, so I guess, you know, we're here, this is a, a warehouse podcast, right? We're not talking, uh, construction, even though we're talking about some materials that might be used in construction. And I, I think maybe a, a good way to start the conversation about how you're involved with the warehousing industry is, uh, as we're recording this, I was at the work conference last week, warehouse education and research council. And I saw that Trex actually had a presence there, a, a table there, um, mm -hmm. And I'm curious, why is that? Yeah, so 
The reason for that is because our bread and butter when it comes to come getting polyethylene film is working with distribution centers and warehouses. So um, we're there to let warehousing operations know there are outlets, sustainability outlets that you can use for your uh, pallet wrap, stretch film, um, fail it and be able to get it to Trex and hopefully make a little money and um, reduce your waste as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's such a, a great thing. And it's great to hear too that that's like one of the, the biggest sources for you and, and partners because I think as we look at the support Supply chain as a whole, sustainability is certainly a, a big topic nowadays, and rightfully so. I mean, it's very important for for environment and the, and the world and our our future uh, world too as well. Um, so I, I'm curious. I mean, how does kind of that program work? Because I know that you know certainly from my warehouse experience, there is a lot of plastic waste that comes from plastic film and you know all the different stretch wrap that's used out there uh and i I would say there's minimal um options or solutions from that perspective that uh have kind of addressed that issue on the use so there ends up being a lot of waste in the end so so tell us a little bit about how do you kind of uh align yourself with the warehouses, distribution centers, to be able to, I guess, create awareness around this program. I'm sure, you know, attending work is is one of those. But um, and then how does that relationship kind of develop where you're able to to collect that waste from? Them? So we have a team of about 20 reps that cover the country um, and their job is to make appointments, seek out people. It's a lot of cold calling. It's a lot of investigation. It's going to conferences and making connections. It's networking just like any other business. Um, But we're networking. We're trying to network with those folks that have the ability to um, make decisions and make changes in what they're doing with their waste and and being able to change that up some. Mm, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's it's great that you're you're pushing for that and and trying to get in touch with this. this population, I guess, the warehouse yep. population, and <laughs> and be able to tap into that resource essentially that would otherwise probably end up in a, a dumpster. Uh, I know I'm I'm guilty of it personally. I've you know seen my uh, operations throw out a lot of plastic crap there, and you know certainly a huge impact on the environment. So maybe you can give us kind of um, some idea of how the warehousing industry uh, has an impact on the environment, maybe from both the, both from a negative and, and a positive perspective. Well, I think with the warehouse industry, you know, it's either for, for Trex's perspective, it's either you recycle or you don't recycle your polyethylene film. And if, you know, for the positivity aspect of it, you know, if they are taking the time to separate their pallet wrap from their other recyclables and then doing that extra legwork of collecting, bailing, and then storing that material there, you know, that's positively helping the environment because once they, you know, reach a certain amount of bales ready for us to come pick up, you know, we schedule an appointment, take that material and bring it directly to our warehouse. And we use a hundred percent of our stream and, um, you know, that allows them to, you know, make sure that they're not putting it in the dumpster or landfilling the material, they have that good feeling in it. And it shows that their company or the warehouse is environmentally focused and friendly. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if that answered your question, but there's as if, if it's negative, the only way for Trex is if they're not partnered with us and they're putting it in the landfill or, you know, they're bringing it to another, um, company that doesn't necessarily, uh, they don't know. The they outlet. don't know. They, they don't know exactly where. Yeah. And they don't know the outlet. Mm-hmm. That it's, right. You know, if it's being recycled or burned or, or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I, I guess maybe um, from the impact side, I mean, give us an understanding of, you know, obviously we see the, you know, the plastic wrap especially is, you know, getting thrown out and we're using a lot of it. But I, I mean, give us an idea on average, like, or an average distribution center, I mean, how much plastic waste are they generating? Like how much are you picking up at a time on average? And what does that kind of volume actually look like when it's all put together? 
So I would say probably warehousing is probably going to generate, depending on the size, it's going to have to be an enormous warehouse. That's usually what we're targeting. Um, but they're going to generate probably a truckload, a tractor trailer load of bale plastic film every month, maybe two. Um, mm-hmm. Some distribution centers that, distribution centers in general that are feeding multiple stores and then collecting back from those stores could generate as many as three truckloads a month. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, I mean, it's a huge amount when you think about it because I'm sure it's all like compacted together, um, which takes up a little space and it's a lot to to collect over time. Um, So you you mentioned there if they're collecting back from the store. So how does that kind of program work because I think that kind of goes even further into making the supply chain more sustainable where you're looking at those different points within the supply chain and and collecting back from like you said in this case the store so tell us how how do you set up a a program like that and how are you able to make that happen yeah so um for for stores we have about 32,000 partnered grocery stores throughout the country and each grocery store, like individual storefront, has a collection bin in the front of their store. And when they're, so it's pretty much like a reverse logistics. So when their trailer comes to drop off their food for, the, for that um, grocery store, they empty that and fill it with the recyclables. The recy- and then that trailer takes all that recyclable material back to their distribution center. Uh, that distribution center then bails it and stores it. So that DC could cover a radius, you know, 100 mile radius of that one grocery store. So that's how they can create a lot more volume. And um, then we pick up directly from that DC. So if you go onto our website, nexttrex.com, you can see all of the US drop off locations. You know, you look under your state and you could see these grocery stores that are partnered with us and we get all their film from that distribution center. Interesting. I see. So, so, I, so do have, I do have one edit on that. So it, it's probably not the exact same tractor trailer that the groceries come in on. We don't want people to think that trash and food are one of the same trailer. So, but it is their internal reverse logistics. So they have, we're just making sure that we're getting back collected back from the grocery stores. That they're just the okay. centers. Interesting. So, so the distribution center itself is serving as kind of a, a collection point overall. And then is the scholar, yeah, yeah, consolidation point. And then it, is the store then taking the action to return it? Distribution center is kind of going out with a, another truck and, and making some, some pickups in, in that sense. How I, I'm curious, like, how does the company go about? Uh, setting up like a, a good program to make sure that all of this is happening. Um, so their internal logistics are probably already set up. They're probably already doing cardboard or something else. So it would just be adding another recycle bolt onto or back to the distribution centers. And then Trex takes Trex doesn't take possession of it until it's all bailed and ready to go. Um, and then we have a trucking company that picks up from the distribution centers. Gotcha. Interesting. And then it comes to your plants and gets, gets processed. So, uh, I, I'm curious cause, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm curious about this because I'm in, I'm in New Jersey, uh, and New Jersey from a store perspective has banned plastic bags too, as well, which, Did you? um, I think you guys utilize too in the process. I mean, it, I guess from that perspective, I mean, is that, uh, is that a, a good thing or, or a bad thing, maybe in a sense, because now it's not uh, turning into recycled material and you said you guys have a, a lot of demand? Yeah, so the bag ban that, you know, it's in a couple different states and, you know, people get weary of like, are we going to be able to participate in a recycling program like this? But that gives us the opportunity to educate, you know, said account or said um distribution center or said uh, next Trex account, which is working with municipalities or counties to educate them on there are other types of polyethylene film that are out, you know, instead of grocery bags, you do have your bread bags, cereal liners, Ziploc bags, case over wrap. There's so much other opportunity to, you know, capture that film. So that, that hasn't necessarily 
affected us. Yes, it you know, grocery bags are still polyethylene film, but they're we still can figure out a way to collect the other additional film out there. Mm, interesting, interesting. And I think does that I'm curious too. I mean, you mentioned that there's there's high demand for your, your product, which is rightfully so. Like I said, it's a great product. Um, but uh, I mean, do those kind of bands actually like drive the demand for you guys for plastic like higher as well because now there's like the less sources we'll be back after a quick break when it comes to systems you want something that will start showing results fast you're looking for a tool that can enable your 3pl or warehouse to get to the next level so why wait that's why carton cloud provides supported Fast onboarding that can have your WMS up and running in hours, not months. Jump into Carton Cloud's easy-to-use workflows for all of your services, including cross-docking, serialized inventory tracking, e-commerce order fulfillment, and more. This software is built by logistics people for logistics people, and those logistics people are standing by to help train you and support you so that you can be successful with your customer. With 24-7 real-time reporting and free online training, you need to check out Carton Cloud for your operation. Take the next step in your operation by heading to cartoncloud.com slash free dash demo or click the link in the show notes. No, I don't, I mean, I don't necessarily think so because when we bring the, um, we call it post-consumer bales, right? So mm-hmm. post-consumer means at grocery mix grocery bags, bread bags, cereal liners, et cetera. So when we bring that, um, those types of bales in, we have audits, you know, monthly, weekly that we audit and those post-consumer bales, only 25% of that bale is grocery bags. So, oh, you know, there's at least, well, I, would say, I would say at least and, and at 25% is, which is great. Yeah. I and mean, that's, mm-hmm. yeah. But yeah. You, then you have that, the other 75 that is the other additional material. Yeah pallet wrap and thing. Gotcha. Gotcha. So would you say that, uh, I guess the biggest source of, uh, this plastic for you is, is from the, the warehousing industry, this, uh, all the wrap. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Interesting. Very interesting. So, uh, that's interesting. I, I would have thought that it was like the other way around, mm-hmm. but, uh, I guess it makes a lot of sense. I mean, especially when you say you're pulling, you know, two, maybe three truckloads out of some, DCs a month. Um, I mean, that's a substantial amount. Uh, so it, talk us through if a distribution center or a company wants to be a part of this program and how do they kind of start to make that happen? What do they need anything, any equipment to uh, do this type of thing? How does that work and how do they get started with the program? So we have different ways of collecting. We have a commercial segment and then we have um, our grocery stores that are partnered with us already. And then what I do specifically is the Next Trex grassroots movement where I work with unique entities like municipalities, counties, small businesses that are looking to create their own outlet for plastic film recycling. Because at times, you know, we want to take some of that pressure off of the grocery stores I mean, they're grocery stores, they're not recyclers, so we don't want to overwhelm them too much. So the other outlets working with, you know, counties and municipalities to give those residents and community, you know, an avenue to drop off their film. So for for me specifically, what they do need is they need to collect the film and then have a warehouse space, whether that's at their transfer station or convenience site, to operate a baler and store those bales until they reach a certain minimum for us to come pick up in a dock in, in a dock door <laughs> in a forklift yeah so those those are the the main things so trailer and storage for them to really facilitate a program and it's it's really nice to see these counties really working with their community and if they don't have a baler do just treks you know, need to help them with that. So we have a baler financing program where we could purchase the baler mm-hmm. for them. And instead of us rebating them for the film, it goes towards the payoff of the baler. So that's an option for them. Or do they need a storage container? You know, do we need to purchase them a 40 foot long storage ship, like one of those shipping containers you see overseas, the Connex box. So we have, there are obstacles throughout the program, but we try and alleviate them 
by offering them these options like the baler or the storage container. And then that helps them really, you know, have a program that is going to be successful for them and their community. And for specifically for warehousing, though, it's, you know, they're going to need a baler and they're going to need a doctor and a forklift and a couple people to take care of things. That's and the storage. Like, yeah. Um, and be able to store inside. So that's the biggest thing that they're going to need. And they can always um, check us out at nexttrex.com. We have a commercial page there that talks all about the requirements, the bailing requirements, um, and what would be required of them. And we're happy to connect them with buyers um, that would be interested in helping them set up a program. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love that you guys are assisting too in, in those cases, if they need a bailer or, or something of that nature to be able to, to make that happen. Because I think, you know, oftentimes some, some companies, they think, uh, you know, sustainability costs more money, right. And there's more investment to do things more sustainable. So I love that you're helping to kind of yep. alleviate some of those concerns and almost, you know, in a sense, uh, if you're doing that, that Baylor financing program, I mean, it sounds like it's kind of, it's kind of paying for itself to, to happen. Right. And I think, you know, then you just have that positive impact from an operations perspective and then also a positive impact from an overall supply chain and, and company impact as well, which I think is super important. And it's really interesting how you've kind of captured this uh, market. And I'm sure there's there's still a lot more warehouses out there that you need to capture as well. So hopefully there's some listening that want to jump on the program and be able to uh, send you their, their plastic and then, you know, maybe put their their treks uh, decking in their house too at the end of the day. Yes, right, right. <laughs> well, but those things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and that's the the full circle that you're going for. Right? I mean, that's the yeah. kind of circular loop there. So, so very interesting stuff with you both here, and I, I think the program is just outstanding. I think it's such a great initiative to be able to do something with that plastic wrap. I know that. In my career, in my experience, it's one thing that always kind of stood out to me as like a huge, huge waste. It's just so much plastic wrap because you, you know, you're picking product from this end of the warehouse and just to move it to the other side, you got to wrap it so it doesn't fall over. And then that wrap is used for maybe 10 minutes and it's trash right after that because mm -hmm. you can't necessarily reuse it. Um, so it's great that you found a stream for that to be able to to happen and for that to be able to um, turn into something that that's good um, and can be used again. Um, so as we wrap up here, I mean, what do you see as kind of the, the future of this uh, program and, you know, how are you going to continue to uh, evolve it over the years to keep tackling this problem? I think for, for my specific program, the Next Checks Grassroots, which work with the municipalities and counties, it's just continuous education. I think that's the biggest thing is to educate um, these types of accounts that we have an outlet for them. We have a program. We're willing to help. And then also word of mouth. I think what's really helped me throughout the, because this next Shrek's Grassroots has only been really here for about three years. It's a, it's a new program for us. Um, but it's word of mouth is seeing, oh, that municipality, that county is doing it and they're being really successful. And even though we might be smaller or bigger, we can, you know, get into it as well. So um, I think that is a way for, for me specifically to grow is, you know, word of mouth and the education piece and the, you know, the PR and the marketing is also going to help um, give that outreach and um, education aspect as well. Um, and I think growth for, for the warehousing is just, contact us. We're happy to help. We're happy to at least help you investigate and see if we can work a good solution for you when you're in your waste streams and, and being able to get the plastic out and get it recycled. We're just always looking to grow. So, um, and we can find, we we're pretty creative in ways, um, to remove obstacles and, uh, figure out how we can help people to meet their goals. All right. Awesome. And it's great to hear that. And uh, hopefully we can create some awareness around this program too here on the podcast. And if people are listening and they want to get involved in the program, they want to bring their, their warehouse on board, what's the best way to do that? Um, go to nexttrex.com and check us out there, or you can send us an email at recycle at trex.com. All right. Fantastic. And we'll put all that information 
at thenewwarehouse.com so people can easily find it. So Kelly and Stephanie, thank you so much for joining me today and talking about this topic. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. You've been listening to the New Warehouse Podcast with Kevin Lawton. Subscribe and check us out online at thenewwarehouse.com. enjoyed this episode make sure you are subscribed to the podcast and for more content from the new warehouse find us on linkedin and youtube links to subscribe can be found in the show notes and for everything the new warehouse head to the